hello this one is gonna be pretty cool um, so last time in my previous rhino video i showed you the grasshopper player and the basic functionality of it and i dug a little bit deeper into it and just fiddled around with a few things and i found one curious little thing that i think breaks the geneva convention in some way and i'm gonna show you that so first of all let me just show you what i came up with right in perspective view i'll just draw a really quick line that is let's say two meters long like that enter um i'll just make it a little bit squiggly rebuild it grab a few control points and uh, let's see they go there uh, let them lift up maybe these two can be a little bit closer closer together right so a 3d squiggly line then then let's change it up to shaded view and the grid is a little bit eh, eh, not, not nice so grid enter um showed grid axis no showed grid no show, show world axis no okay and now now i turn on uh grasshopper player i run that command i open up my geneva <laughs> script and it asks me to give it a geometry right so it's waiting for me to give it the curve i give it the curve voila <laughs> the hell is this right so basically basically now with this one i have a user interface that is directly in rhino that is linked to my curve so i can take it and i for instance uh, with this slider i can move it up whoop, 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 and i can thicken the wavy wire that is guided by the curve i can also take this ball right here and eh, or the um, circular slider right here and just ride it along the the circle this just increases how many um how many wires i have so let's say six then i can say well those six wires i want them to be more um revolving so the revolving aggressiveness is higher and also how far away are they from the initial guide curve right so with this whoop, i can create something like this right and once i'm done it asks me if i'm happy i choose true and i have myself a coil right nothing too fancy but it's a nice little thing so bringing a user interface or creating a user interface in rhino without needing to actually open up the script is pretty damn cool isn't it so i will be showing you how to do that in a very very simple way right um and the you know the, the script right here the, the the script that actually creates this is only going to be available for the patreon supporters just because it's a complete mess and it's really big <laughs> so i don't want to spend like three hours kind of going through through it all it's way too much i will just show you the principles so i'll open up grasshopper and i'll create a new new file and that file will contain a curve i guess well maybe not a curve let's see so actually let's keep it empty so let me delete everything here and let's go back to uh where let's go for wireframe view let's turn on the grid again grid show grid yes grid axis yes everything back to normal there we go and here let's create a slider that will work in um uh, through the grasshopper player for that we will be using kangaroo so i will just grab actually let's go through the tabs and kangaroo 2 i'll just grab the solver like that oh yeah and you guys love to see the bifocals there we go 
perfect. So I'll grab the solver, right? And here I will be creating only two uh, goals. First goal is going to be grab. Grab goal enables me to grab any point on the screen and just drag it. Uh, you see where I'm going with this, right? Second goal is going to be uh, stay on curve, right? So I don't remember exactly where it is. I think it's go under goals on. Yeah, on curve. There we go. These two guys. And then just holding down the shift key, I'll add the grab node as well as the on curve node into the goals object, goal objects right? These two. Then, then, we need, you know, we need a line and we need a point, right? So that we can actually move the point on the line and make sure that it sticks, stays there. So there's like many ways of how to do it. In this case, I will just create an SDL uh, line from start, direction, and length. And for start, uh, let's just use Wait, does it actually have a starting? No, it's we need to give it a point. So I'll just construct point. I'll construct point. By default, it's at 0, 0, 0. And I'll just connect it to the start. The direction is going to be... Eh, let's go along the x-axis. X. Nope, that's not the x-axis. Unit x. Connect it that way. And then for the length... Uh, I don't know, like a hundred, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Mm, let's do more. Let's do 200. Perfect. So now I have a line, right? <clears throat> then for this line, I will create a point. Um, it doesn't matter where it is on the line. So I'll just say point on curve. Yeah, that's, that's good enough and connect it that way. So now we have a point that's on the curve anywhere, right? Let's just keep it at the mid. And now I can directly connect the point to the points input of stay on curve uh, goal. It's basically a goal that Kangaroo will try to keep that point on the curve when it's being dragged around. And for the curve to stay on, I will use the line like that. Now you can see that the script, or not the script, the, the, the solver is happy. It's not red anymore. That's just because it has enough information to go, go off. Then let's hide all of this. Well, not all of this. Let's grab the curve and we can make it nice, but maybe that's later. For now, this works. So technically, now I should be able to just take this point and move it, right? Easy. Easy peasy. So the question is, how do we then get make this into a slider? Because right now, even though I can move the point, it's, you know, it's nothing special. It's nothing, nothing really, really changes, uh, right? It's just a point that's moved on the curve. So I will just create a button for resetting the the solver just in case and here uh, as the output of the solver we get the vertices right we get that point the new position of the point and as you can see wait panel as you can see as i move the point it's going to change the the, the x value is going to change of it right so we're not going to actually extract the x value from the point rather we are going to evaluate where that point is exactly along the length of this curve right so i'll just grab a curve component just to make it a little bit cleaner drag it out here let's hide that one so we have a curve and we have a point right here uh, also let's make it cleaner just point bam like that hide this now we will use um, curve closest point, curve CP component. We will use the point to connect to the P input and we will use the curve to connect to the C input, right? So inherently it doesn't do much, but what it gives us is the parameter, 
the parameter on the curve. That is very important. By the way, if your parameter value, when you check it with the panel, if your parameter value is not in between 0 and 1, then you might need to right-click on the C input and choose to re-parameterize. Re that will make sure that the length is proportional rather than in millimeters or anything like that. So now we have the parameter at 0 0.84 and now as I move it somewhere close to the start right here it's 0 0.1 if I move it somewhere here it's 0 0.96 right so now now we make it uh, we, we can actually use use these numbers right so let's do something very very simple um, let's create a circle uh, circle C and R. Circle around center, normal, and radius. So our center point is going to be the point output here. So we're basically, eh, let's go, eh, there we go. So we create a, a circle right here around this point. And as you can see, the circle moves together with the point. Uh, for the normal, let's keep it at Z axis, right? So it's flat on the X, Y plane. And for radius, we can di uh, we can convert this number to be, you know, uh, to, to remap it into the bounds that we want, right? So we know for a fact that this parameter is between 0 and 1, right? So we can use remap numbers and we can remap this number. Uh, with the source domain stating that you know the minimum that this number can be is going to be zero and the maximum that this number can be can be one so this is the default we don't need to change it but for the target we can like remap it or scale it to any number range that we want so what does zero become and what does one become so for this we will need to use um, construct domain just a regular one, not the squared one. Construct domain, right? Which asks us for two inputs. So basically, when the point is right here, what's the smallest number? So that's the A input. And when, when the point is right here, what's the largest number? That's the B input, right? So for the smallest number, I'll say, um, and that's, of course, going to be uh, convert it into the rad uh, radius of the circle. So for the smallest number, I'll say 50. Uh, that's probably too, uh, too, too big. Let's go for 10. And for the largest, I'll go for um, something visible. Let's go for 50. Right? Something like that. So now that range of 0 to 1 gets remapped to 10 to 50 from 10 to 50, right? And I can con connect the mapped numbers to my radius input, and voila. Now, as I move this point around, it becomes bigger. Cool, huh? <laughs> I think that's that's pretty neat. Pretty neat? Nice? What? Pretty nice. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. So now, let's, uh, let's make it a little bit nicer. Uh, for the point, I will create a sphere. Just a sphere. Bam. And for the radius of it, I will say that the radi radius of the point is the same as the range for picking up the point. By the way, there's the range input for the grab. If I say that the range is 50, that means I can grab the point by hovering my mouse quite far away from it so it's just you know the tolerance for when does it recognize that the point is actually clicked so 50 might be too much let's visualize it so i'll use the range as my radius input for the sphere yeah that's that's real that's a lot so let's reduce it to something like eight yeah eight seems to be okay and let's just do some custom preview shenanigans with a color swatch stating that it's black. Okay, so we have that. Then for the 
for the curve itself, uh, we can also do, let's say, what do we do? Let's do variable pipe, pipe variable. So we connect the curve to the curve input. For the parameters, we will just state, you know, two radii. So for the zero and for the one. So zero is the start, one is the end, right? So I'll just create a new panel. I'll type in zero, enter, one, and then click outside of the panel, right click on the panel and choose multi-line data. Multi-line data means that it's it understands that I have given it multiple inputs, not just one. It's very important to do that. Then I connect it to the T input. And now it's basically waiting for me to give it two radii, one for the zero, meaning this endpoint right here, and one for one, <laughs> which means it's this endpoint right here at the end of the curve. So I'll just create two sliders, right? Uh, let's say first slider is five, and uh, or, or rather second slider is five. Let's say first slider is one and the second slider is five. And I'll just connect them in correct order, right? So first comes one and then comes five, holding down the shift key. Bam. You can see now the curve get, becomes thicker. It's a little bit too thick on the end. Let's do one and three like that. Also, custom preview. Swatch. Black. Okay. We have that going. Let's hide most of the things here. Because right now it's uh, it's pretty it's it's becoming pretty clean aesthetically speaking, right? And that's that's honestly basically it, right? Now we can actually convert this convert this into a um, uh, 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 grasshopper player script. So what do we want to bake out? as our final output. I guess we want to bake out the, I guess the circle, right? Just, just, just to show you how it works, right? So the circle, after we run the grasshopper player command, the circle will, will be baked out. So I'll go to params, utilities, and choose to use context bake, bake, context bake, like that. And the problem with it, is that if we don't have any inputs, so let's say we run the script, right? And as the script is running, it's it, it's not waiting for, for us to actually fiddle with this, right? It's immediately going to bake out right now if, if I do it this way, right? That doesn't really work, right? We need to have some sort of a, um, some sort of an input for us to say that we're done. Right? So in between the circle and the context bake, I will create a get boolean, for instance, get boolean input. That's the, that's the only input that we'll have. And this will tell us if it's true or false, right? So I can use, for instance, filter, stream filter, and connect the boolean to here. And when the boolean is false, it's going to give me the zero input when the boolean is true it's going to give me the one sorry yeah uh, the output is going to be what comes in at zero if it's false and if it's true then the output is going to be what comes out of here as one right so i will just connect the circle to one and then that will con connect to context bake right so Technically, what's going to happen is when you click on the get, well, sorry, when you run the script, right, uh, the grasshopper player script, it's going to ask you yes or no, and you're going to say yes, and only then it's going to bake out, right? But before you do that, you'll be able to move it around. So here, let's just make it a little bit nicer, get boolean or rather prompt. Uh, for the prompt, I'll say uh, true to bake or happy question mark. Okay. 
and we're we're kind of done i don't need that anymore though we're kind of done so this is like the the basics of it i will just save it file save document let's just save it here as our small little test save there we go and let's try running it so i'm gonna close this and now i'll run grasshop per player actually like typing it in here really sucks so i'm going to do I, i've never tried this before but i'll go here um click on the gear icon choose new tab let's go for new tab and i'll just say grasshopper or, or let's let's go for player player and then click anywhere on this tab and choose new button and for the new button um yeah we we can kind of choose an image or anything like that i don't really really care i just need it to be i just need it to to run grasshopper player script or, or command like that because i can't find it here maybe it's there but i can't find it and tooltip is run the good stuff and text the good stuff okay text only should be fine um yeah do i need to link it here i don't know let's let's try to link it so i'll i'll link it to player hit okay we have the good stuff let's see if it works it does work i just click on it it opens up and now i'll just run the small little test by the way good game Pr pretty pretty nice really short but really really fun game anyway i'll i'll run the script hit open opens up right now i can move it around and i say i want my circle to be this big i choose to that that i'm happy true and it gives me the curve voila that is pretty damn cool because now you can have user interface right directly baked into rhino without ever needing your you know teammates or anyone to open up grasshopper and you know fiddle with the inputs and so on everything is super interactive might not be for for everyone but imagine that you can also push and pull on the vertices of the mesh you can real realign um the, the 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 footprint of a how do you call it like the minimal surface so you can realign the footprint of a minimal surface there's many ways of how you can work with this this is just the simplest one um which i think is pretty damn cool anyway i will like let's do last thing is i'm gonna open up grasshopper and i'm gonna show you how that file that i showed you before looks like right so recent files the geneva file that's my file that is why i'm not sharing it just with everybody or rather that's why i'm not kind of going through it <laughs> you know with you because it's such a mess right everything works and everything is kind of i cleaned it up as much as possible maybe i could do a better job with grouping and so on but this again this is going to be available for only for the patreon supporters uh, i think with just having this and being able to to operate with this uh, you will definitely be able to build up something like this or something even cooler so please please let your imagination run wild keep in mind you can move vertices around in this way right so you can make pretty cool toys <laughs> to say the least yeah, that's that's about it that's that's all i wanted to show hope you enjoyed this one. Oh yeah by the way twenty thousand subscribers hurrah i'm gonna have a live stream um tomorrow maybe so if you see me live jump in say hi 
you know, just for fun. Okay, now I'm done. <laughs> Take care. Bye.